Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and today we're actually going to talk about some Flash Thompson stuff. Uh, obviously, I'm a little behind on this, and I wanted to cover more of his history. That's what this whole fourth season is about from a comic book standpoint, you know, because obviously each season we go over different eras of the Venom comic book. And this season I really wanted to focus on Flash Thompson, but we will still cover like a week's worth. I think I have about maybe five uh, Eddie Brock stories that we haven't covered yet from the 90s, so we'll go over those at one point this season. We'll also wrap up the time that he was answering. Venom. We'll get through that as well. And then we'll also have some more Carnage stuff. And as far as current things, you know, for those of you wondering like why I'm not covering Scream or Ravencroft or any of that stuff, I promise I will, or Venom Island. Like I will at some point down the road, I'm going to save them since they're kind of Carnage based mostly in a lot of ways. I'm going to save them for when they come out and trade paperback. And then once I pick them up, we'll discuss them closer to when the Venom 2 movie comes out. So don't worry. I know I'm not going to cover a lot of modern stuff, you know, as it comes out, uh, but I will cover it eventually down the road. I promise you that uh, because between you know doing these older comics movie news and uh, and then also you know the Venom cartoon coming up Maximum Venom I want to make sure I can cover all of that uh, as my top priority so uh, but we'll get to some of those other stories for sure definitely but today we're going to talk about three books in particular uh, three little stories uh, one of them is a full issue but the other two are like short stories in you know bigger stories in bigger issues and uh, these kind of cover Flash Thompson leading up to his first issue uh, because we already talked about you know the the one where he went to war like we did in the first episode of the season was kind of his history it led up to him going to you know Afghanistan and then we told that issue uh, like you know Amazing Spider-Man issue where he loses his legs and so now this is picking up from there and that's going to start an Amazing Spider-Man extra number three and this was like a, a short series that came out I think it only lasted three issues and it came out during like the one more day thing or bra uh, a brand new day after one more day um, and it had all the different writers from the Spider-Man books all contributing short stories and this one is from Mark Guggenheim who wrote the previous story where Flash Thompson lost his legs so this is him wanting to you know write the first interaction between Peter Parker and Flash Thompson post Flash is, you know, losing his legs. And that's what this story is. So it's uh, Peter fighting like a D-list villain in the main story. And he's talking about how, you know, Harry's right. Everything Spider-Man touches, it he ruins lives. You know, like I've, I've lost friends, I've lost loved ones. And I even caught, you know, like uh, inspired friends to go to war and they lost, you know, their, their limbs. And then he's like, but I don't want to go there. I don't want to think about Flash. And then it cuts to a few hours earlier before Spider-Man gets in a fight with this D-list villain who even Spider-Man doesn't remember his name. And I don't think he's, it's said in the book. I think it's just meant to Spider-Man just be angry and he's like I can't believe I'm fighting this D-list guy and I have all this stuff on my mind and it cuts back and it shows a few hours earlier when Peter Parker went to the airport to pick up Flash Thompson uh, from you know arriving back from from war and when he gets there he sees Flash and Flash is like hey Pete down here because flat you know Peter's looking around for you know his friend who's tall and he's like where is he where is he and then he hears hey Pete down here and he looks over and he sees uh, Flash Thompson's wheelchair and and it it stuns Peter Parker he is like what and he's like, Flash, I'm, I'm so sorry. And then, you know, Flash like, hey, it's okay. I, I'm sorry I didn't tell you. I didn't mean to spring it on you. I just was too nervous to say anything. And then by the time I could have called you, you know, like, uh, you know, I just, I couldn't get up the nerve to do it. And uh, he goes, so I'm sorry I'm springing it on you like this. And Peter's like, it's it's fine, dude. Like, you're you're my friend, of course. And, he, and you know, so they get to ride in like a limousine or like a car, Uber or car or something like that uh, to take them back, you know, home and stuff. And so while they're in the car, they're talking and, and Flash mentions, He's got a Spider-Man pin, um, you know, uh, above his Medal of Honor or whatever. And he's got a Spider-Man pin there. And, and Peter's like, why do you have that pin on you? And he's like, because, you know, Spider-Man inspired me. He's the reason I went back to war um, because I was trying to get my life together. And I see Spider-Man as this symbol of heroism. And so I wanted to be like Spider-Man. So I, I went to war and fought for this country. And he goes, and I saved lives. And he goes, so I don't regret what happened, you know. And, and he goes, I, 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 am, I am who I am. And I'm, I'm, I'm not sad to be here because of what I've done and who I saved. Um, of course, that tends to not be the full case because, you know, Flash does struggle uh, post this meeting with Peter, but it was a really good moment. And I really liked how Guggenheim handled this scene. So if you want to check out, I mean, it's a really short story. It's only a couple pages within this, you know, story that he wrote where Spider-Man's fighting this D-list guy. And then at the end, you know, he's like, screw this guy. Like, I don't even remember his name, um, but uh, I'm taking out my anger on him. I'm, I'm going to kill the guy if I, if I keep thinking about all my hardships and what I've done to people. And, and he feels responsible for what happened to Flash in some way. So he's just like, I, I can't deal with this. And he's like, so he just leaves the bad guy there and walks away. But there's, um, but there are, you know, just those three pages of Pete and, and, and Flash interacting. So it's not a lot, but it's in Amazing Spider-Man number three, uh, extra, or Amazing Spider-Man extra number three. And that's, it can be found on Comixology as well, if you want to check it out. 
Um, and it's written by Mark Guggenheim and the artist by Pat Belief, I believe. So, uh, yeah, I like that storyline. And then right after that, you know, like well, within a short amount of time after that issue came out, Amazing Spider-Man 654 came out. And there is a main story in it with Spider-Man versus like the Spider Slayers and uh, upgraded Scorpion and stuff like that. So, again, I love that, uh, you know, if you track through this stuff, like if you go back and look at Spectacular Spider-Man by Paul Jenkins and Humberto Ramos, that's the one where, um, you know, Peter Parker is looking after flash after you know he comes out of his coma and he's kind of like you know uh slightly uh, brain dead you know at, at the time you know he's he's uh, he's in a wheelchair and that was a, a venom storyline so it's like oh wow that's so neat that eventually flash becomes venom because that kind of ties them together and then now in this one the you know the first mission or the first time flash bonds with venom the symbiote uh, it's in an issue where the scorpion you know is fighting spider-man and the scorpion was you know one time venom as well so i really like that i don't know if that was planned or if it's just coincidental but or you know it just happened to work that way or whatever but it, i loved it i thought it was i think it's awesome that these characters and these threads are just tethered together like that um so in amazing spider-man 654 which is also written by dan slot and i think the art is by paolo segura and uh roman uh roman riviera i believe too and this storyline is just a short story so the main book is Spider-Man vs. Scorpion, but then there's like an, a six or eight page backup story at the back of the book, which we're going to talk about here, which is about, uh, you know, Flash Thompson meeting General Dodge um, and also Doc, Dr. McKenzie. And the two of them are kind of explaining, hey, we're bringing you into this project. And, you know, Flash is like, yeah, why? Like, why have I been contacted? Why do you want me for this? What is it? You know, he's like, I'm not Captain America. You know, I know you want to do some kind of super soldier rebirth 2.0, because obviously, you know, that, uh, you know, Project Rebirth was like kind of the code name for Captain America. So this is like Rebirth 2.0. And Flash is like, yeah, I, I don't know why you want me. Like, I one, I don't have legs. And two, I don't think I'm Captain America material. I'm more of a Spider-Man guy, you know, I think. And, uh, and McKenzie and General Dodge are like, yeah, that's exactly why we chose you. And they bring him into a room where he's facing the symbiote. And he's like, what's that? And they're like, yeah, that's the Venom symbiote. And uh, we've captured it after, you know, whatever, I guess after it split off Matt Gargan after Siege or something like that. Um, but they were able to get a hold of it. And they're like, yeah, it's in our custody now. And we are, we've been studying it. And what we've realized is that if we kind of inject it or like we hook you up to a machine and let it travel into you um, and then we give you these drugs to kind of sedate it to an extent uh, you will be in control of it but you only can wear it for like 24 hours uh, and then after that we got to take it off you otherwise symbiosis starts to emerge and you start bonding with it so we gotta we gotta pull it off you so do you understand your mission we're gonna give you this suit and you're gonna carry out missions for the US government, top secret missions. No one's gonna know what you do. You can't tell Betty Brandt, you know, the woman you're in love with and who's taking, you know, kind of checking in on you and taking care of you. You can't tell your best friend, Peter Parker. Like, we follow your life, we know what's going on, and you can't tell any of them. This is gonna be your secret, and you're gonna have to go out there and fight as Venom. And he's like, Well, I wanna, can I just be like the new Spider Man? They're like, No, you're Venom. You're gonna be Agent Venom, and, uh, and this is the mission. You know, do you accept it? So he's like, all right, yeah, sign me up. So he hooks up to the suit. They put the suit in him. And then he actually, you know, the suit makes new legs for him. And he stands up and he's like, oh, my God, I am I have legs. He's like, I did, you know, I, I guess I didn't think this was going to be part of the process. He goes, so I can I can walk again. I can move. And they're like, yes, absolutely. You're you're you know, the, the suit is going to give you those abilities, but you're in control of it because we injected you with stuff that will prevent it from fully bonding with you. But those drugs are only going to last about 24 hours. So we're going to have to again get you back here and get the suit off and he's like so they're like are you ready to do this and he's like sure and he goes but it feels weird and you know this is neat and so he's like you know showing off and they're like hey here's some like um you know chemicals you can put in and then he like makes a syringe out of his symbiote uh and he's like what's and there's like a liquid in it. he's like what's that liquid they're like oh that's truth serum that's you know um you know different agents that so we're gonna put these capsules and your suit can uh, absorb them and they're going to sit there. And then if you create syringes, you can use that to get enemy information. And so he's like full on tactical soldier interrogation type. And I was like, wow, this is really cool. What a great concept for, for you know, for Venom and changing him in this way. And I really liked what they did. This was adding new stuff to Venom. Uh, but and telling new stories with Venom without, you know, completely negating what's there before. But he doesn't hear the suit in his head because of the, the drugs, uh, at least at the start. And that's what I really like about it. It's that it's a slow build. At first, it's a very one-sided relationship with, you know, with Flash Thompson going, I can do this, I, I can be I can be this person, and I'm in control. And then slowly, you know, it, it, that changes. And that's what I really liked about uh, this run. Because I'm already reading, like, I'm already a few trades ahead now. And I really see why a lot of you guys uh, have such love 
for this run and this version of Flash Thompson and this version of Venom. I can see it now, uh, even more so than before. I've read some of this run before, but touching up on it now has been fantastic, and I'm, I'm digging it. So, um, so yeah, so then they have a dog there named Samson, and the dog is like sniffing, uh, you know, uh, Flash Thompson before he puts the suit on, and it likes him, and he's petting it, and he's like, oh, yeah, your dog loves me. But once he has the suit on, the dog starts barking at him, and he's like, this is our indicator. So once they, they're like, all right, now that you've worn the suit, you see that you have legs, sit back down in your wheelchair, we're going to extract the suit, and uh, and then, you know, we're going to give the test. And then so they extract the suit, and the dog comes up to him and sniffs him and licks his hand again, and they're friends again. So they're like, okay, Samson, uh, you pass the test. Samson's going to detect... He's going to be able to detect if there's any symbiote trace left in you after we pull it off. And if he barks at you after we pull it off, then things are going to get complicated around here. Um, and so Flash like, okay, I understand the terms. So that's basically what this short story was, was them setting up the terms and the rules that they're going to try to play by. And of course, like any good story, you set up the rules that you're going to play by and then you break all of them. <laughs> and that's what makes it uh, so fun. So that leads into Amazing Spider-Man 654.1. And Marvel was doing this around this time, these point one issues where they were, you know, kind of, uh, you know, it's like a one-off side story, but they didn't want to completely renumber it or make another number one. They were just like, no, this takes place in between like these two issues. So it's like a point one book or a point five book or something. So uh, so 65, uh, so 654.1 is written by Dan Slott and it's art by Humberto Ramos, who, you know, like I said earlier, did the story where Flash was comatose and he was living with Peter Parker. And during that Venom story called The Hunger. So it was cool, you know, to have Ramos back and drawing this version and this one-off storyline that takes place at the beginning in Madripoor, which is a Wolverine reference, which was awesome. I love that. And they're, again, putting, you know, Flash Thompson in, back into the Marvel Universe, having them go to shady places, places where government types need to be and spies need to be. And he's kind of a James Bond. He's, and he's even having fun with it. He's like, uh, you know, he has this woman who's kind of uh, watching out for him named Kate Glover, Catherine Glover. And she's like, look, uh, flat. He's like kind of flirting with her. And she's like, look, I'm not here for you. I'm not here to monitor you. I'm not your, I'm not your friend and I'm not your partner. I'm here to make sure that symbiote uh, doesn't take over your body. And, uh, and you find out why. And it's because uh, there actually was a test subject before Flash Thompson uh, that died uh, from this Venom, Agent Venom merging. Uh, so there was already a test subject that they used, a, a, another soldier, and he didn't make it. So again, setting up the stakes for Flash and getting you to start worrying about the guy, you know, instantly, because you're like, oh, come on, he's actually a good dude. And, uh, and, and I'm sure that previous soldier was too. So that that's not good. So there's already someone died over this project, and yet the government and everyone's still going forward with it. They've clearly taken a million precautions, but you know, and they learned from some mistakes that they've obviously made that led to a man's death. But they didn't tell Flash about this. So Flash is out there just kind of having fun. He's like, "Yeah, I'm I'm Flash, you know, Flash Thompson," uh, or he goes by uh, Gene Wiseman. You know, uh, he's like, "I'm Gene Wiseman," and uh, and so she's kind of like, "Oh, great, he thinks he's James Bond now." So he's kind of having fun. He's flirting with like a countess. He meets a guy named uh, Yusuf uh, Farin or something like that or Yusuf Kasima um, and uh, and he's like or Kasim Yusuf Kasim or something and he's like this um, international Middle Eastern uh, guy who like uh, you know makes deals with people and stuff like that and he's very important very rich guy and uh, and so he gets kidnapped in this issue uh, after this Madripoor event a bit from I think the Countess and and some of like she turns out to have like henchmen and hench people and a, a super villain named Flag Smasher like an old D-list villain uh, and they bring Flag Smasher in and together they kidnap, uh, you know, Yusuf and they bring him, you know, to some un undisclosed location. So after they see that, Flash has to get the suit. He's like, all right, we got the information, uh, but I got to take the suit off and, and have some downtime until they find out where that location exactly is so they can, you know, pinpoint where Yusuf is. So Flash can't go in and save him right now. And plus his 24 hours are almost up. So uh, Kate Glover and the team, General Dodge and McKenzie and Dr. McKenzie and everyone, they go back and they extract the suit and they give Flash a couple hours to himself. So when he does, he's going home he's like i need some sleep but then betty's there and she's like hey pete just broke up with his girlfriend his current girlfriend can you go talk to him so flash is like sure you know and, and it shows the struggles of flash like just going taking the elevator down and wheeling himself across town to go find peter parker and how much of an effort it is uh so i love that they spent time doing that i thought that was really well done uh because yeah it, it must you know it, it's it's an obstacle now right and so uh so it's showing that the strain of his everyday life and how it's starting to 
you know, get to him already even just, although he's just been back, you know, not too long, but he's already signed up for this Venom mission and he's had legs. So going back to the wheelchair, he's kind of like, it's showing him already struggling with it, you know? And so he gets over, sees Peter talking to Mary Jane and he gets upset by that. Cause like, dude, you broke up with your current girlfriend and you're going back to talk to your ex. Like what if Carly sees you, you know, what if your current girlfriend sees you doing this? Like you're such a bonehead dude. Like you have no common sense. And then at that time, before you can go talk to Pete and kind of confront him or talk to him about it, uh, that's when he gets a call from General Dodge, who's like, hey, we got the location for Yusuf, you need to come back. And so Flash does, he gets rebonded with the suit, and he gets sent in uh, by the Sky Spider, I think is the name of the ship that they have, and they send him into this uh, new enemy territory uh, where he's, you know, is saving Yusuf, and he's disguised as one of the henchmen there, and he gets the jump on Flag Smasher and the Countess, and grabs Yusuf, and they're about to leave, but then that's when the Flag Smasher guy, like, shoots like a bazooka or a rocket launcher or something, and it hits the ground, and Flash able to push Yusuf to safety so he's not harmed but the blast blows off Flash's legs again which obviously doesn't have flesh legs it's just the symbiote legs evaporating but the image was so intense and it's like boom and you see the symbiote splatter everywhere and then Flash hits the ground and he looks at down at his legs and they're not there anymore and he goes my legs he goes you took my legs you know and he gets he's super mad about it and uh, and he's and his adrenaline kicks in and what happens is the suit uh, with that adrenaline boost, it's able to burn out, I guess, the last of those chemicals that are inside Flash, and the actual Venom suit takes over. And so we're like, now we get to see Venom, uh, you know, in control. And he takes over Flash's body, and he grabs Flag Smasher, and Flag Smasher's like, don't, don't come near me, I have a detonator, I'll blow this place up. And without even hesitation, Venom bites his arm off before he could press the button. And then he spits the, the controller out. So he like, sp like eats the arm and spits the controller out. And then he turns around and, and guts and eats everyone else. And Yusuf is sitting there just like scared out of his mind because he sees this this guy who was like 6'3", you know, or 6'2", uh, who was like, you know, sleek looking, you know, Agent Venom. And now he's like a, an eight foot tall monster, you know, like uh, like uh, Matt Gargan was when he was Venom. And he's biting arms off people and, and, and they're screaming and blood squirting everywhere. And it's gets, it turns into a horror story. And then so at the end, you know, Flash is bringing Yusuf back to the, the Sky Spider ship and Mackenzie's there. And I think uh, I think Mackenzie's there. Kate Glover's there. And they're like, hey, we saw a spike in your, your readings. You know, we're you know, checking your your blood work and stuff. We have nanites inside you. And so we saw a spike. Did the Venom suit take over? You know, did you lose control? And he's like, no, he's like, I'm fine. And they're like, they're like, Yusuf. What happened? Like we saw a spike. You know, did you did he turn into a monster? Did he did he eat anyone? Like we have to know what you saw. And then Yusuf like looks at them and he looks over at Flash and and Flash has the symbiote on and it's like giving him this like really stern look. And then he looks back at them. He's like, nope. He goes, I saw a hero and he did heroic things and he saved my life and he's a hero. <laughs> like he could tell he was lying, but he was just like he was scared of Flash. And then see Flash goes, just like the man said, I'm a hero. And you can see that Flash is starting to be, you know, now that hit the chemicals burned out, he's now during this time actually, you know, uh, interacting with the symbiote in a way that he hasn't had access, uh, you know, up to this point. So uh, when he separates from the suit at the end, he's going away and he goes, see you around partner. And Kate Glover's like, yeah, no problem. I'll, I'll see you next time. And Mackenzie, Dr. Mackenzie's like, uh, I don't think he was talking to you. And then, and then Kate Glover like looks at her and then looks up at the symbiote and the symbiote just kind of sitting there, you know, in the, in the tube, you know, looking out at flash um, and, you know, and kind of has like its hand up like this. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty great. And then at the end of the book of, of this issue, 654.1 uh, flash is talking to Betty and she's like, look, you're clearly keeping secrets from me. I don't like that. You know, uh, promise me. And you never even got to talk to Pete. You know, I finally ran into him. He said he never saw you. So, you know, you got to be a better friend. You got to be, you know, and he's like, oh, look, Betty, I'm trying and I'm so sorry. And I promise you uh, no more secrets from here on forward. And obviously we know that's a crock of bull crap, uh, but, uh, but still great issue. All three of these little stories, like the two short stories and this one off, fantastic stuff. I highly recommend picking them all up. They're on Comixology. Amazing Spider-Man Extra Number 3 by Guggenheim and Pat O'Leaf. Uh, Mark Guggenheim and Pat O'Leaf. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 654. The backup story is by Dan Slott and uh, Paolo uh, Segura and Roman, um, Roman Riviera. And then also Amazing Spider-Man 654.1, which is by Dan Slott and Humberto Ramos. All great books. Highly recommend them. 
check them out. And I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you've read these, if you haven't read these, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below as always, and we'll continue our conversation down there. I'll have some more Venom stuff coming up. I just wanted to record at least something comic book related uh, before my surgery, and which is in you know a couple days from now. So uh, I'll try to schedule this and have it go up like Wednesday or Thursday. I already had the other videos go up on, I think on Monday and Tuesday. So hopefully this will be your like Wednesday or Thursday. I'm thinking Thursday video. That way there's a little bit of distance between the other two. And, uh, and if any more news pops up, I'll try to record it uh, this weekend coming up uh, because hopefully I'll be back on my feet and able to uh, make videos for you guys and you'll see me rocking my new helmet and stuff. So uh, thank you guys for the support as always. It means a lot to me so much. And thanks for the well wishes and everything that I've gotten so far. And I know some of you will probably continue to do that while I'm on bed rest. So I promise as soon as I can to let you know that I'm doing okay, I will post something on Instagram, Twitter, and even here on my posts as well. So thank you guys for, as always, for the love and support. It really means a lot to me. And I'm glad we were able to get into this. So now moving forward with the comic books, we can dive into the first graphic novel. That's what we're going to talk about uh, for the next Flash Thompson storyline we're going to talk about is the first like five issues that Rick Remender wrote. And I'm looking very much forward to talking about that with you guys. So we'll do that as soon as possible. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.